This is the third section of chapter three, further centers of mass, and this section is on non-uniform bodies. Now, what is a non-uniform body? Well, a non-uniform body is a 3D object that does not have a uniform density that is rho throughout its mass. So in different parts of the 3D object, the mass is going to be different. So let's start first of all by looking at 3D objects, which are composites, where we've got uh, 3D shapes made up of different parts, maybe uh, a cone sitting on top of a hemisphere, that type of thing. And each part will have a different mass. So I've got these standard results here. So when we've got a solid cone of height h, then from the pointed end there, the vertex, the center of mass is 3 quarter h. If it's a hollow cone, then that distance becomes a third h. If I've got a solid hemisphere, then the distance of center of mass from this plane face here is three uh, apes r, where r is going to be the radius of this solid hemisphere. And if, if it's a hemispherical shell, then the distance of the center of mass is a half r, where again, r is the radius. So we can use these standard results where maybe we've got parts of these shapes um, put together, or maybe one subtracted from, an, uh, from another one, but they're going to have different masses. So one may be rho, may, one may be two rho, three rho, that type of thing. And then lastly, we're going to be looking at non-uniform rods. So this is a cylindrical rod of length L. The uh, center of mass G is going to be given as a distance of X bar from the end of the cylinder. So we'll probably make this end or where we're measuring it from the origin. Now, because it's a non-uniform rod and its density is not uniform throughout, the density will be given as a function of X. In other words, as X changes, the density changes. So this function is going to tell us what the density is at some uh, particular X value. And if you want to find the uh, center of mass X bar, this distance here, then um, we're going to integrate between limits of zero and L, the length of the rod, and it's going to be X times by this function of X, which gives the density dx. And we divide that by an integral again between zero and L, the length of the rod, um, at no X here, so just F of X, the function that gives the density dx. And once we do that, that will give us the position of the center of mass of this non-uniform rod. Example 13, a uniform solid right circular cone of height 2R and base radius R is joined at its base to the base of a uniform solid hemisphere. The centers of their bases coincide at O, the origin, and their axes are collinear. The radius of the hemisphere is 2R. Find the position of the center of mass of the composite body if the cone has four times the density of the hemisphere. So let's start first of all by sketching out what this looks like. Okay, so here's my diagram. I've, I've put all the uh, measurements on here that are given in the question. Now, um, I've put where the two shapes are joined here at the origin, which is what's specified in the question. Now, I could have also drawn it this way, sort of sideways, I'd get like the same answer. I mean, in this question, I'm going to be getting uh, a Y bar. Um, in this question here, I'd be getting X bar. So, you know, it doesn't specify which way round. I suppose this, it looks like some sort of spinning top, um, but it would also work this way round as well, as long as where the faces are joined is at the origin. Now, before we start, just look at this bit of information here that tells us the density of these two parts, the cone and the hemisphere, are different. It says that the density of the cone is four times the density of the hemisphere. So if we call the density of the hemisphere rho, then the density of the cone is going to be four rho. So a couple of things we can do now. Um, because this is an axis of symmetry here on the y-axis, we can say that x bar equals zero. And we've got our table set up here to work out the mass and the center of mass of each part of this composite shape, the cone and the hemisphere. So starting with the cone, it has a mass of its volume times by its density. So its volume is gonna be one third pi radius squared 
um, so that's just r squared times by its height, which is 2r, then times by its density, which is 4r. And that simplifies to 8 over 3 pi rho r cubed. Then moving on to the mass of the hemisphere, that's going to be half of 4 thirds uh, pi r cubed. So 4 thirds pi r being 2r cubed times by its density, which is rho. And that simplified becomes 16 over 3 pi rho r cubed. So I've just highlighted it here because we're going to need those in a moment. Now, moving on to the centers of mass, we'll start with the cone. Now, we know that the formula tells us that center of mass is that at a distance of three quarter h, the height of the cone. Now, we want the distance from the origin. And that's going to be at a distance of a quarter h, a quarter of the height above the base is where we're going to find the center of mass. So our working is going to be a quarter times the height, which is 2r. So the center of mass of the cone um, above the origin, y bar, is going to be a half r. I'll just highlight that. And then we'll move on to the hemisphere. Now for the hemisphere, the distance is from the flat end. It's a distance of 3 apes r. OK, so that's fine because that will just give us the distance from the origin. So here we're just going to do three heaps times by R, the radius of the hemisphere, which is 2R, which is going to leave us with three quarter R. Again, we'll highlight that. Now, I just need to be careful here because actually at that distance is below the origin. And I could say that it's 3 eighths times by negative 2r. So what I need to add here is that it's 3 quarter r below the origin. So it might be better to give the center of mass as negative 3 quarter r as that's going to be a coordinate. So in fact, I will highlight this as my answer. Yeah, so 3 eighths times by, you could do negative 2r because you're finding the distance there. But just remember that's the distance below r. So as a coordinate, uh, negative 3 quarter r. So now we're ready to work out x bar. So x bar is going to be each mass times by its center of mass divided by the total mass. So starting with a cone, it's mass 8 over 3 pi rho r cubed times by its center of mass, which is half r, plus there's a composite shape. There's nothing to subtract uh, in terms of, like, you know, you've got a shape taken out of it. Um, so plus 16 over 3 pi rho r cubed times by its center of mass. Now that does introduce a negative because its center of mass is at negative three quarter r. And all of that's going to be divided by the total mass, which is eight over three pi rho r cubed plus 16 over three pi rho r cubed. Now every term has got pi and rho in it. So they're all going to cancel out like this. Then if we simplify the top, then we will get four thirds r to the power four minus four r to the power four. And then the bottom, that will be eight over three r cubed plus 16 over three r cubed. That simplifies down to negative eight over three r to the power 4 over 8 r cubed and then that simplifies to negative 1 third r so we can put our final answer at the top here well this is our answer but we need to say where it is so 
the center of mass center of mass is at a distance of negative or a distance of a third r below o and it's along the y-axis it's actually on the y-axis so i guess if you wanted to give the center of mass as a coordinate you would write that as zero negative one third r Example 14, a non-uniform um, telegraph pole is 10 meters long. At any distance x from its base, the mass per unit length of the telegraph pole is given by m equals 20 minus 1 fifth x at kilograms per uh, meter. By modeling the telegraph pole as a rod, we're gonna find the center of mass of the telegraph pole and the distance of the center of mass of the telegraph pole from its top. So here's my sketch of the telegraph pole. I've put the bottom of the pole at the origin here. Here's our formula that allows us to find the center of mass of a non-uniform rod. And to find the mass, the bottom part of the formula is the bit that gives you the mass. And that's going to be the same for any center of mass formula here. So this is what we need to do to find the mass of this telegraph pole. So we just substitute in the values. So we're integrating from zero to L, the length of the, the non-uniform rod. In here, we put the function that gives us the mass of the rod at any particular point above its base. Um, and that's going to be 20 minus 1 fifth X. So that's what we need to integrate with respect to X. So we can do that integration straight away the uh, 20 becomes 20 x and then the minus 1 fifth x uh, well it's going to be x squared divided by 2 so minus a tenth minus 1 tenth x squared and our limits are going to be 0 and 10 so actually from this uh, function here that gives you the mass you can see that as the height increases the actual mass uh, per unit length uh, decreases so it's going to have a smaller mass at the top than it is at the bottom starting with uh, 20 at the bottom and decreasing as we go up anyway let's calculate this so substituting in the 10 20 times 10 minus 1 temp times by 10 squared obviously we're just going to be subtracting zero so that's 200 minus 10 so we've got 190 now we need to give units where are we going to find the units well we find them here so it's going to be kg 190 kilograms and part b we want to find the distance of the center of mass of the telegraph pole from its top now this formula will give us the distance of the center of mass from the origin so once we've worked out what that is We'll do 10 minus that answer. Okay, so we know our limits are 0 and 10. Then it's going to be x times by 20 minus 1 fifth x dx and then divided by uh, this part of the bottom. Now I'll write it down, but we've just worked it out in part A. It's going to be 190, but I'll write the formula out. And then I'll write down 190 in my next step because I've already evaluated it in part A. Okay, so yeah, straight away, 190 written at the bottom. Expand the brackets at the top. So I have 20x minus 1 fifth x squared, which I'm now going to integrate so the 20x will become 20x squared divided by 2 so 10x squared 
and then this part here this will become x cubed then I divide by 3 so minus 1 15th x cubed on my limits of 0 and 10 so evaluating the top so substituting in the 10 we're going to have 10 times by 10 squared which is going to be a thousand minus one fifteenth of ten cubed. That's also going to be a thousand. Let's write it as ten cubed here. Divided by one ninety. And then when we work all of that out on our calculator, we get two eighty over fifty seven. Now that 280 over 57 is the distance to the center of mass here. Okay, so if that's G, our center of mass, that distance is 280 over 57. We're required to find this distance here, the distance from the top. So that's going to be uh, 10 minus 280 over 57. And that's a distance of 290 over 57. OK, so um, if I do 10 minus that answer, that 280 over 57, that gives me 290 over 57. Um, and that's going to be in meters. So that is the distance of the center of mass from the top of the telegraph pole. So you should now be able to do exercise 3C on pages 101 to 103 of the textbook.